All right, welcome to Surgical Robotics Lab 1. Um, this lab is going to be focusing on um, setting up your robot, um, connecting it to its web interface, and then using MATLAB to provide a few commands. Um, so uh, the first thing that you're going to want to do is get the power source connected to the power block and all of the wires between the power block, the mecha, and the desktop set up correctly. So I'll show you how to do that now. All right, so this is how you will be given your power supply and your mechademic robot for lab one. The black box over here, this is your power block, and this is the base of the mecha that you're going to be connecting. Um, so currently, the power block has the D-sub dongle connected to the I.O. port, and the power cable over here connected to a power source, a wall outlet. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to connect the female end of the uh, black power cable to the port next to the D-sub dongle on the power supply. So we'll go ahead and screw that in. Next, you're going to take the male end over here, and you're going to connect it to the top port on the base of the mecha. Next, you're going to want to take the turquoise ethernet cable, which is already connected to the back of the desktop. And you're going to want to connect it to the ethernet one port uh, on the base of the mechademic. And that's pretty much it for the cabling. Um, so the next thing that you're going to want to do is provide power to the robot by pressing on the black switch on the back of the box. So that'll be located over here. You'll click on that. And a green power LED will light up. The next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on the black reset button on the top of the power block. And two things are going to happen here. The green, the Orange status LED will light up on the top of the power block and the lights in the back of the mecha will start flashing. Right now, all of the top buttons or LEDs are flashing, uh, but once the computer has recognized this network as an ethernet network, the, green, the orange LEDs will stop. So we'll just wait for that to happen. So now that the lights are flashing like this on the top of the base of the mecha, with the red power LED and the green link act in LED, we know that we're ready to move on and configure the ethernet connection on the desktop. So once that's all set up and you've provided power to the Mecca, you should be good to set up um, an ethernet uh, connection between the Mecca and the desktop. So I'll start sharing my screen and I'll show you how to do that. Close this guy. You're gonna wanna go to the control panel network and internet, network and sharing center. And in the top right here, in the network and sharing center, you'll see all of the connections and networks that your device recognizes. Right now, ethernet is the only one for the purpose of this video. Uh, you're gonna wanna click on the ethernet and in the ethernet status window that appears, you'll go to properties. And in the ethernet properties window that appears, you'll go to the internet protocol version four, TCP IP v4. Click on it and go to properties. You'll select the use the following IP address bubble, and then you'll fill in the three boxes as follows. The IP address will be 192.168.0.101. You're going to want to make sure that all the numbers are in the correct boxes, because when you fill in the subnet mask, you're going to want to specify which portions of the IP address pertain to the host and which ones pertain to the client. Um, so it should be 255, 255, 255, 0. That could fill in automatically for you. The default gateway will be 192.168.0.1. Uh, you're going to click OK. If when you click OK, you get a pop-up window saying that the default gateway is already being used, that's probably because a student has configured the robot uh, before you um, and it's redundant. Just click yes, it'll override it, it'll be OK. Um, so you'll close all of those. 
Now you should be good to connect to the web interface. So you'll go to um, whichever search engine you prefer. I'll go to Chrome. In the address bar at the top, you'll type in the IP address for the default, uh, the IP, the default IP address for um, the Mecca's web interface, which is 192.168.0.100. It should come up automatically. And then you'll connect by navigating to the status tab in the top right and clicking on the connection box. You'll be greeted with the connection type selection of controller monitoring. If you want to provide motion commands directly from the web interface, you're going to want to be on control, but monitoring will be useful for when you're controlling the robot from a different software like MATLAB, uh, but you would like to interact with the web interface for, uh, for information regarding the robot's position and orientation. So for now, we'll go on control and connect. We'll provide power to the joints by clicking on the activation box. Um, in a few seconds, it'll click. After which you can home the robot by pressing on the homing box. The homing will just move the robot's joints slightly so that it can get its bearings and know its position in space. And now your robot is set up and good to go. Um, this box on the right for the status should never be clicked. That's the error box. Um, that will fill itself out if the robot's in error. And if it's, uh, if it's ticked, just call your TA over um, just to be safe. Usually it's a pretty qu quick fix, but uh, let's not break the robots. Uh, so on the left-hand side here, we have the jogging panel. You can enable jogging by clicking on this button. And you can either jog the joints manually, like so, by using the arrows. Or you can jog the end effector's position linearly along one of the axes, X, Y, or Z. Or you can rotate it about the axes. And you can do all of these commands either relative to the world reference frame or tool reference frame. So an important concept in robotics is that you have a base reference frame here, which is by default the world reference frame. And then the tool reference frame is different. So the, mo the movements will be different depending on which one you specify movement along. For example, the X axis in red is pointing straight forward from the world reference frame. So this is what linear movement looks like relative to that. But the tool reference frame's x-axis is sort of diagonal going down. So it'll look like this. <sighs> Likewise, if you want to rotate about the y-axis relative to the base reference frame, which is this green guy here, this is what it looks like. You don't have a lot of mobility. But relative to the tool reference frame, which is still this green guy up at the top here. It'll, it'll look like this. Don't have a lot of mobility still. All right, so let's go back to the joint jog and zero all joints. You won't have to worry about the joystick tab. Um, let's move on to um, the right-hand side of the web interface where you have the programming panel and beneath it you have the response log. Um, the programming panel is where you can manually input string commands so that you can get the robot to execute a series of motions um, simultaneously or, or consecutively. Um, or you can navigate to the quick command tab down here uh, where you can choose the command that you'd like. I'll choose move joints and it'll provide you with the parameters that you need to fill in. Move joints is pretty self-explanatory. You're specifying the desired joint angles for each joint of the robot. So you fill those in and you click on this arrow and it will send it to the programming panel. And if you want to execute it, you need to disable jogging and then click on the send program button and the robot will move. You'll notice in the response log, you have a whole bunch of these end of block statements. This is just the robot letting you know that it has successfully carried out a movement in its entirety or a command in its entirety. You can disable end of block so you don't have to see all these, um, but that's not important right now. The reason that the response log is here is because if you want to um, obtain some of this information from the robot, uh, when you're using MATLAB, um, you won't be able to access all of these parameters up in the top right here. These are just for visual purposes, um, giving you the end effectors position and orientation in space and all of the robots pertaining joint angles. Um, you can't see that in MATLAB. So for example, in the programming manual, you might type something like get pose. And when you execute that, the response log will generate the pose of the robot. So this is nice because you can access this in the prompt in MATLAB. So let's move to the MATLAB script that you guys will be using for um, the lab. 
So we'll take the power away from the robot. We'll disconnect it. And now we'll connect it again using monitoring so that we can still interact with the web interface. So I'll stop sharing my screen. I'll go back to my camera. So this is what we're looking at now. This is the MATLAB script that you guys will be given. Um, an important note to preface the uh, MATLAB script is that MATLAB likes to compile everything uh, and try to execute as fast as possible, I guess. Um, would be a good way to put it. So if you were to just have a setup and shut down function for the Macadamic to activate and deactivate the robot with a whole bunch of motion commands in between, uh, the robot would set itself up. Um, it wouldn't do any of the motion commands and then it would shut itself down immediately. So for that reason, I've separated the code into blocks, uh, which are enabled by keystrokes so that you can set up the robot, wait until you're ready, press the key, press the space bar, uh, move on to your motion commands. Once you're ready, move on to documenting the request commands from the response log in the web interface and then press the space bar one last time to shut down the robot. So this is what that will look like. You'll run the program. It's gonna power up the robot automatically. So you hear the click and the robot homes itself. All right, and then it zeroes itself. Next, you're going to want to press the space bar to execute your motion commands. So something that's important to notice about the motion commands, which is uh, which are in these while loops, um, your exercises are clearly highlighted for you. This is where you'll be providing your motion commands. Here's the one that I've written for this tutorial. It's um, a move joints command. Um, and the syntax that you're gonna use in MATLAB to communicate over a TCP client is right line, open parentheses, T comma, move joints or whichever string command you'd like, uh, close parentheses. So T, if we scroll down in the setup function is the variable that I've used to establish the TCP, TCP client connection with the web interface. So that's why you're putting T in there. So now I'm gonna press the space bar and uh, the robot will execute the motion command and then it'll wait to get the information. So there's the robot moving. So now the robot is again waiting for this get info command, which is another built-in function that you guys don't need to touch. This get info command just means you can press the space bar and the response log information will be displayed in the MATLAB prompt. So I'll click on that. It doesn't look like you guys can see the MATLAB prompt here. So I'll go through it again by sharing my screen. Uh, afterward, you just won't be able to see the robot. Uh, but the MATLAB prompt is now displaying the uh, response log information. Now we're just waiting to press the space bar one more time, which will zero the robot and shut it down for the next iteration for your next exercise. All right. So I'm going to share my screen and do that again because there are a couple things that you guys might have missed. So let's split screen the web interface with MATLAB. And then I'll put the prompts down here. All right, so I'm gonna run the program again and we're gonna see what's actually happening on your computer. So I'm gonna click run. In the command prompt, you can see the activation. The robot has just clicked and it's homing itself. Right. Now you can see that this blank box has appeared here. Um, this is part of the buffer. You can't close this. Um, this is the GUI that is waiting for the spacebar command. It's kind of hard to get rid of this in MATLAB. So if you're going to be using this. You can either click on it or press the spacebar to move to the motion command portion of your code. So I'll click on it this time and it does its motion command, but you can press the space bar as well. Just make sure that you don't close it. Um, now we wanna get the information. So I'll press the space bar again. And if you look at the command prompt, we have pose and then we have joints. And you might say, well, yeah, we can just see that up in the web interface up here. 
but we can't use that information. So now that we have this as a string argument here, um, we can use this information um, in maybe the next iteration if we wanted to, to write a, a more complicated program. So now we're just gonna press the spacebar again to zero the robot and shut it down. So there we go. And it's shut itself down. You can close this and I'll go back to my camera. All right, so that is pretty much what you guys have to do for the lab. Um, all of the activities are to be done in the exercise commented regions in the block. Um, make sure that you wait until everything is done before pressing the space bar or clicking on the GUI for the next set of instructions. Um, and uh, make sure that you comment out your previous activities before you execute a new one. Otherwise, you'll just be observing the, the accumulation of all of your robots' motions from the start of the lab to the end, and it'll, it'll become tedious. So good luck, guys. I hope you enjoy the lab. Um, see you.